My mom and sister decided to insult me. So what did I do? I decided to ruin my mother's dream. Yeah, sounds like I took it too far, but let's start at the beginning, and I promise, by the time this story's done, you're going to be 100% on my side. My sister Sage, who's 31, and I, 27 female, are not on talking terms ever since she said I ruined her life. So, this is how we ended up cutting almost all ties with each other. Buckle your seatbelt. My whole life always looked up to her, and to be honest, she had always been my role model. I always thought her life was so perfect, so I tried by all means to be like her or to impress her. But she was not the type to impress easily. But anyways, I was still glad she's my older sister, although she never really liked me. I could say, two years ago, Sage came home with a bright face and a quite happy smile. I wondered what had happened that's making her so happy. She's announced that she's getting married since she was mom's favorite. You can all imagine mom's face when she heard the news. She always had dreams of being a grandmother to mostly my sister's children. I didn't know if she would ever want to accept mine as her grandkids one day. She kept reminding Sage of how it would make her so happy if Sage can give her grandkids soon. She was jumping with joy when she got the news. She had already even started with wedding preparations. I was acting genuinely happy for Sage. I felt she really did deserve to be happy. I walked towards her to hug her and congratulate her. Mom pushed me away and said I would give my sister bad luck in her marriage. A tear dropped from my eye and rolled down my cheek. I wiped it away and for a moment I thought that negatively about myself. I thought maybe mom was right. I moved and ran to my room. Maybe mom also just did not like me very much, but why? I have no idea. I sat by my bedside and cried so much. I wondered why I was born into such a family. Why would my own mother think that I would wish bad luck upon my own blood sister? I cannot even wish bad luck upon a rat that's being chased by a cat. What was the point of thinking about it if all it did was overwhelm me with sadness? I cried myself to sleep on the floor and slept for hours. When I woke up, I looked in the mirror and promised myself that mom would not stop me from sharing my sister's happiness. I will stay away from it if that's what mom wants, but I will not stay away from helping out during preparation. A few days after, the preparations indeed started. Every time I wanted to help with them, my mom was always in my face, making sure that I do not touch anything because I would apparently ruin things for my sister. What the hell did she mean I would ruin my sister's wedding? I'm her youngest sister for heaven's sake. I was now starting to get very annoyed by mom's behavior towards me. I try so hard to ignore her negativity, but she would really be getting on my nerves. I told myself, Julia, stay away from your sister's wedding. You tried to do your part, but if mom doesn't want you to, then drink your water and just mind your business. I started going out of the house early morning to go to the office and come back late in the evening when the house was not full of people and, of course, preparations that I was not a part of. It was working well and the weekend came. I could not go to work in the weekend, so I stayed in my room instead, door shut. I could hear my mom laugh and giggle out loud and she sounded so happy. I wondered if she would ever be proud and happy for me, as she was with my sister. But anyways, I forgot about it and I noticed I've actually been starving for some time. And since it was dinner time and the groom's family was coming, so the two families can meet and agree on a date. I went to the bath and joined the family for dinner. The food was smelling so good. Or maybe I was just hungry. As I walk down the corridor, I see the groom's family in the living room with my mother. I smiled as I walked towards everyone. 
I could tell that the way the groom's family looked at me, at some point they thought I was the bride. I kept smiling and greeting everyone. My mom looked at me with envy. She probably felt that I was taking my sister's attention away. Mom came close to me and pulled me by my arm with force to the corner of the room and said to me, What the hell do you think you're doing? What was the grand entrance for? I told you to stay away from your sister's wedding and everything that comes with it. My eyes filled with tears as I answered to her, what have I done that makes you hate me so much and think badly about me? I'm your own flesh and blood. And Sage is not only your daughter. She's my sister too, you know. Sage walked towards us with the anxious smile and she said to us loudly, Huh, dinner's ready. Why don't we go to the table? She was trying to make sure that the guests could hear what she was saying for them to not suspect that our family is not as perfect as it seems. I forcefully removed my arm from my mother's hand and I walked to the dinner table, but it looked like she was watching my every move. She walked past me in a hurry and whispered in my ear, If you touch that food, I'll forget that you're my daughter and I'll embarrass you. So, me always being my stubborn self, I took a plate and started serving myself, and I started eating. As soon as I was putting the third spoon of food in my mouth, Sage immediately slapped the spoon out of my hand and it fell to the ground. <laughs> that definitely caught the guest's attention. Out of anger, Sage started shouting at me. What the heck do you think you're doing? You know not everything is about you. You're just so self-centered and shameless. How can you start eating like an animal? That's exactly one of the many reasons why I'm your mom's favorite and not you. I could see a hint of hatred in my own sister's eyes glimmering towards me. I kept looking at her and then mom came and pulled me from the table to continue where she left off. If only you know how much I regret being your mother. If it was up to me, I promise I would have left you in that hospital. All you do is ruin things and break everything you interact with. Wow. After hearing what they just said, I was convinced that they are indeed not at all my real family. Was that how they all really felt about me? Or were they just angry at me for something I may have done in the past? And I maybe did not apologize for it, or maybe we did not resolve it. Not that I knew of what. Anyways, I stood there boiling with response to what they just said, so I controlled myself until I was filled completely with rage and erupted like an active volcano with heavy overflowing lava. You know what, Sage? I always looked up to you, not only as my older sister, but also as a role model. But I guess I was a fool to be so naive to see that you are the one who's self-centered. I'm sorry for making you feel less important on your special day, but I'm even more sorry for your fiancé, who will forever live with someone like you. Not only a selfish person, but a liar as well. I hope you've told mom and your fiancé about your lab report that you received months ago about how you're not able to have children. Everyone's jaws dropped when they heard what I just said. Yes, I might have said it in anger, but I meant every bit of it. My mom's dreams were crushed into mince meat pieces, and Sage did not know what to say. She wondered how I found out about her being barren. I mean, every young sister loves going in on her older sister's room and trying makeup on and other things. And that's how I found a laboratory report that she was fruitless. I was shocked when I read it, but I could not tell anyone because it got me in trouble with Mom and Sage. I kept it to myself, but they went too far with the insults this time. I just could not walk away and act like nothing happened. They fired first. All I did was defend myself. Sage stuttered as she said, w w What do you mean, Baron? 
How do you know? She started sweating and looking around to see her fiancé's face as he turned and walked out of the room. She ran after him to try to explain what just happened, and I walked past my mom with my shoulder roughly pressing against hers, walking straight to my room. That's when I overheard my sister trying to explain, but it did not sound like there would be a wedding. Her fiancé was so disappointed in her, and he kept asking why she chose to hide such a matter from him. I minded my own business and went to my room. I could just imagine how embarrassed my mom was after thinking that she was going to be the one who embarrasses me. The hunter becomes the hunted. Did they really think I was just going to forget what they said and just walk away? They were very, very much mistaken. I might be self-centered, as they said, but at least I am not a liar. As I was in my room, I could hear the guest cars peel off the driveway. And after some minutes, my sister budged into my room, and she looked as if she was just walking into hell to battle the devil. You little freak. If I don't get married, I'll ruin you and make sure that you wish to die and live to regret what you just said back there in the dining room. You're so selfish. I just can't bear to live in the same house as you. I swear, I will destroy your life. Sage said to me in an exasperation. I looked at her for a second and looked away. I was annoyed by her entrance. What made her think she could just budge into my room if I was in a prison break? I said to her, Look, Sage, I'm sorry your guest left, but it was all your fault. If only you treated me like your younger sister that I am. I'm still trying to figure out why you and mom hate me so much. Mom then comes in a minute later. She looked at Sage with disappointment. Sage knew how much mom wanted grandchildren, and she knew that she could never fulfill mom's dreams. But she led her on a wild goose chase full of false hope. When did she plan on telling everyone? She did not even tell her own future husband. Maybe it was for the best, but for everyone to know the truth. Sage has been trying to reach her fiancé, but he's been unreachable. She was getting worried to the extent that she was not even eating. And a few days later, the groom came to our house. It first looked like he was ready to marry my sister, but it turned out he actually came to cut the engagement. Who would have thought that one's dreams could come so slow but shatter so fast? My sister, devastated. She begged him to reconsider and she said he was just being unreasonable. It looked like he's made up his mind to me and nothing was going to change his decision. Not even the tears of the quote, love of his life. I do understand him though. I mean, if I were him, I would also doubt my decision to marry my sister after what happened that day. He left her on the ground and she ran into my mom's arms for comfort. And what happened next shocked me as much as it would shock you. Mom pushed Sage away with so much force. She almost fell to the ground. Sage could not find a reason why mom would push her favorite daughter like that. She was being too harsh on her for what she did. That only explained how much mom wanted grandchildren. I stood there and watched the drama unfold between mom and Sage. As much as I wanted to laugh, I had to keep it in. That is what happens when the pride underestimates the youngest cub. Things get ugly really fast. Mom walked up to me and sighs. <sighs> Her eagle eyes turned to puppy eyes and she said, My dear Julia, I can't believe I treated you like an outside in your own home. I called you names and made you feel like you're not belonging and I cannot unsay all those things, but I want you to know that I'm truly sorry from the bottom of my heart. You know I never meant it. I just wanted to make you know. I love you with some tough love, you know. I interrupted her unprepared speech. It was the last thing I wanted to hear. Her lying to me and giving excuses about how she did not mean anything she said to me that day in the past. Cut the crap, Mom. If you want to apologize to me, feel responsible for your actions and words. What do you mean you just wanted to make me rough? 
You're my mom, not a military captain at a military school. You think a little apology will make me forget what you said to me? How many times you made me cry myself to sleep? Or how much you made me wish dad was still alive to see how his wife is treating his daughter? No mom at all cannot get away with just that. My sister was burning with anger to see how much mom changed sides like changing a pair of shoes. For so many years, she was mom's favorite, and in a snap, she meant nothing to her. So, even though we were never close with my sister, I knew she would not rest until she got me back for destroying her marriage, before it even started. But honestly, she destroyed her own marriage. If only she had been honest from the beginning, it would have been different, and it would not have ended with me telling everyone her big, dark secret. So... I decided to pack my things and find an affordable apartment I could rent. After I packed my stuff, I went to say goodbye to my mom and sister, and it was right there and then that my sister and I decided to cut ties with each other. My mom tried to contact me here and there, but I did not want to see her after I finally learned how good it feels to be away from pain. Mental health is important in a person's life. Well, that story was insane, I think that entire family needs some serious family counseling and therapy. Drop some advice down below what you would tell OP in this wild scenario. The next story is, am I the a-hole for missing my grandchild's birth to attend my other daughter's wedding? Let me know what you think about it, here's story number two. I am the mother of two wonderful daughters, Sophia, 32, and Nicole, 26. And I'm really not sure if I was cruel toward Sophia for my decision or not. Nicole got married this year and Sophia had her first child, which is my first grandchild. I've had a good relationship with both of my daughters and I've always tried to make sure neither of them felt like I favored the other. But I admit there was some rough patches with Sophia. When Nicole got engaged, she asked if I would walk her down the aisle since her father has never been in her life. I asked her what about her uncles or brother and she said no, she wanted me. I was more than happy to agree and helped her plan her wedding. My daughter Sophia announced her pregnancy around the beginning of the year. The timing panned out that she would be due after Nicole's wedding. So she asked if I would be in the delivery room with her and stay with her and her husband for a few weeks after the baby was born to help out. I was very excited too. And since we already lived in the same town and see each other almost daily, staying with her would not have been a problem at all. Instead, Sophia went into labor almost three weeks early, the afternoon before Nicole's wedding. I missed Sophia's first call because I was already almost two and a half hours away where Nicole lives and helping set things up and doing last minute errands to help. When I called her back, I found out she was in labor. She wanted me to get there ASAP. I told Sophia I would do the best I could and would let her know immediately when I'd be there. I explained the situation to Nicole who understandably also wanted me to be there for her but understood that Sophia wanted me with her too. Nicole was able to move her ceremony to the morning and make it a quick 25-minute ceremony, and there would be just a few hours gap between the ceremony and the reception. I thought this was a good compromise that would let me be there for both of my girls. I called Sophia and she wanted me to get there that night. I asked her if her husband was with her and she said yes, so I asked her to please consider him as a second choice, until I could get there. Sophia got upset and told me just to forget about it. I got to the hospital early the next morning and missed the birth by a couple of hours. Sophia was so mad, she did not want me to come in when she was moved to a room. I thought that was understandable and she would talk to me soon, but it's been weeks now and I've tried to apologize to her. I've talked to my son-in-law, and he said they're both mad that I chose to ditch Sophia when she needed me most for a party. So, 
I'm here asking an outsider's perspective if I was wrong to not go to the hospital right away. Okay, so this one's kind of interesting, guys. Half of the comments are saying not the a-hole, and the other half is saying that the OP is the a-hole. So, let's talk about it in the comments down below. Tell me your opinions on this, and let's discuss why you think like that. Okay, there's still one more story that we're going to look at today, and the title is, Am I the a-hole for sending an invoice to my wife's cousin after she, quote, did not have space for us at the wedding. I own a printing company that I run with my wife. Her cousin came to us and wanted us to all do the signage, banners, and guest book, life-size cutouts, etc. for her wedding. We do this all the time for friends' weddings and events, and we never charge. We're happy to help out, and it's usually a lot of fun working together to make some cool stuff. A few weeks before the wedding, her wedding planner tells us they need all the items by X date so they can set it up for the wedding. At this point, we had not received our wedding invitations and did not even know when the actual wedding was. So, my wife texts her and tries to clarify when the wedding is and if we missed the invitation somehow. Her cousin replies and says, Oh, we downsized the wedding and we decided to have like a close friends and family thing and that they did not have space for us in the small venue. My wife and I are pretty hurt and insulted. On top of that, we've spent close to $2,000 on all the materials. Her cousin and the wedding planner kept making tiny revisions to the artwork, had us print samples to see how it would look in person resized several of the items a few times. All that cost a ton of time and money, and we're a functioning business, so we either have to delay other orders or stay late and print her stuff on our own time. So, I went ahead and billed her for our cost and said we needed payment before delivery because I'm not going to chase her for a payment for months or years after the wedding. We're not making money on it, just charged her the cost of material. So far, we've gotten threats, calls from the cousin, her fiancé, and some random members of my wife's family that I don't know. Some of the groomsmen, etc., essentially calling us a-holes. After the harassment, I'm considering charging full price, or else we won't deliver the items. Are we a-holes here? Sorry, but I'm not going to waste my hard-earned time and money on someone who doesn't even consider us close friends and family. I just think this one was weird because OP and his wife were doing so much for these people, absolutely free signage and all the stuff they needed which was worth thousands of dollars, and yet they don't even get invited to the wedding. Um, I would have been sending an invoice as well. That's just common courtesy to invite the people that spent so much money helping you. Let me know what you guys think of this though. If you've ever been in a similar situation, drop it down below and let's talk about that. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you're new here as we read stories every single day. Thanks for tuning in guys. I hope you have an amazing night and I'll catch you in the next one.